Can I eat just meat forever? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about my keto evolution and what that means, why I've changed the way I ate, how I made those changes, and all that that entails. Before I get into it, if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an upload from me. I make videos about what I eat in a day, keto, ketovore, all those good things with some fun stuff thrown in too. So when I began keto, which was about four years ago, I had been diagnosed with Hashimoto's. Uh, I gained about 55 pounds in a fairly short amount of time, unexplained. I'd never had any weight problems before. And then on top of that, I had some severe symptoms of Hashimoto's. If you wanna hear all about that, I'll link that video in the description about my Hashimoto's journey. But I was pretty much miserable. I tried Paleo, Whole30, uh, a lot of different things to try and lose the weight and also feel better because I was just plain miserable. And my husband, who most of you know, uh, was already doing keto and so I decided to give it a shot in a moment of true weakness. I had mono and I'd had mono in the past and it took me weeks and weeks to get over it. So I tried doing keto to see if it would help me get better faster and it did. I was back to work within a week and on top of that I'd lost five pounds of what was probably inflammation and also seen a huge decrease in my symptoms from Hashimoto's. So uh, my anxiety was better, I was less tired, my brain fog was better. It was just mind blowing to me how much a difference just a week had made. And so then I was hooked. Now at the beginning, my keto was extremely dirty. I had plenty of cheat days. And even with those cheat days in the beginning, I still saw extreme benefits and so I continued with that way of eating for, a, I would say at least a year, uh, being mostly keto, dirty keto, but still having cheat days. I was working as a labor and delivery nurse, working 12 hour shifts. There's a lot of opportunity to cheat at a hospital, vending machines, um, we would order pizza, that type of thing. So I was still consuming foods that were not great for me, but I was so sick that that little bit of change gave me benefits and, and I was happy with that at the time. And then I had some infertility issues which were linked to the Hashimoto's and I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's officially when my antibodies were up and all of that. So at that point I decided to clean it up and go the way of true keto or um, clean keto whatever you want to call it without the cheat days. And so I did continued to have infertility issues. I ended up having to go through IVF to get pregnant, but prior to going through IVF, I transitioned to carnivore at um, the behest of my husband and also a fertility specialist in New York from CNY Fertility. His name is Dr. Kiltz, K-I-L-T-Z. He promotes a meat-based carnivore diet for his fertility patients. And so, I followed his lead on that and I ate carnivore in the months leading up to my IVF and we had a successful pregnancy with the first cycle which is something that usually doesn't happen and so I'd lost uh, almost all of the weight that I'd gained from Hashimoto's at that point prior to getting pregnant. Um, obviously when I got pregnant I gained weight. I did stay keto throughout my pregnancy. Uh, in the first trimester, unfortunately, I had meat aversions, uh, very severe meat aversions, so I wasn't able to consume as much protein as I was used to. So I used keto chow protein shakes in the beginning until I was able to eat um, meat protein, egg protein, and that sort of thing throughout the rest of my pregnancy. And I stayed keto the entire pregnancy with a few occasional treats like at my baby shower and we went on a cruise and I had some ice cream. But uh, on the whole, I was keto throughout my pregnancy. And then I gained um, 65 pounds with my pregnancy, which is a little excessive, even though I was eating keto. I mostly uh, attribute the weight gain in my pregnancy from my cortisol and stress levels being very high. We had a lot of trauma and stress during my pregnancy and 
I'm sure that played a part. But also, you know, it's probably some women gain more weight and some women don't gain a lot of weight during the pregnancy. There's women that eat milkshakes and cheeseburgers with fries their entire pregnancy and don't gain a lot of weight. So I think genetics and stress and cortisol all played a part in that. I wasn't sleeping well, all those things. So I did gain a, quite a bit of weight. And after I had Beckett, I breastfed from the moment he was born till I'm still breastfeeding now. We're trying to wean. So for 19 months, I've breastfed. And during that time, in the first three months, I was carnivore and had no issues breastfeeding. I did drink plenty of water, got my electrolytes in, ate enough. I was eating a lot because he was a cluster feeder and just continued to nurse very frequently. He loved breastfeeding. Even when he wasn't hungry, he would want to breastfeed. So I was producing more than enough milk and he did very well and continues to do very well. And I successfully breastfed and still am with um, Ketivore at this point. So Ketivore, I have a whole video, I have two videos actually about Ketivore, which just basically is a slang term for meat-based keto, which means I mostly eat meat. A very few select vegetables enter my mouth, and those are usually um, garlic, onion, tomato, and avocado. And then herbs and spices I allow for those type of things and some keto friendly sauces as well. Most of my nutrition comes from meat or animal byproducts like eggs and um, I do eat some organ meat but I don't eat a lot. I just it's not my thing you know. So over the past year I've done mostly ketovore. I lost my baby weight fairly fast. Again I think that comes down to maybe genetics because breastfeeding for some women doesn't help with weight loss and for some women it is helpful with weight loss but it's not a for sure thing if you breastfeed you'll lose all your weight that's a common myth for a lot of women that doesn't happen I've heard from many many of you that that didn't ha happen for you you breastfed and you didn't lose your weight until you stopped breastfeeding so my focus after having Beckett was not weight loss, it was milk production. I just happened to lose the weight fairly quickly and go back to my original weight prior to Hashimoto's and prior to IVF and prior to pregnancy. Most of my changes were brought about by health goals. So in the beginning, I just was trying to feel better and I felt better and therefore dirty keto worked for me. And then after a while, I wanted to feel even better and so I cleaned it up and then I wanted to get pregnant. And so I cut out vegetables and did carnivore. Then with pregnancy, I was just trying to survive pregnancy. And so I did what suited me for each trimester and for um, my baby's health. And then after I ate according to what I thought was the most uh, nutritious way for me to get all the nutrients in my body to produce breast milk and that's what I did and then it was sustainability for me can I eat just meat forever for me <laughs> the answer is no uh, no I can't because I am just not at a place in my life where I feel happy mentally and physically just eating meat I have to have a little variety thrown in there. So a little tomato, sometimes a little avocado. I eat onion with the most of my meat, garlic. I have to have that type of stuff. There are some people who can eat beef plain, no salt or anything, and they do well and they feel amazing. A lot of people just beef and salt. Some carnivores eat a variety of meats. And then some of us, like me, I just need a little bit more than that. And so rather than going all the way back to keto, I just throw in a little bit of vegetables every now and then. And then on special occasions, birthdays, anniversaries, those type of things, I may have something a little off plan. And I, at this point in my life, I can allow myself to do that and not fall completely off the wagon. So I do allow for celebratory feasts, if you will, and those type of things. I've cut out nuts over my journey as well. Nuts have always been a thing for me. I just really enjoy them. But after a, 
a point I realized that those were causing those were causing me um, to have pain, uh, gut issues. They just did not promote overall wellness for me. I still eat them on occasions during the holidays. I make um, a keto Chex mix and there's nuts in that, but I cannot eat them all the time. Sweetener is another thing over my journey that I have changed how I use. Um, in the beginning, I was eating lots of keto treats, lots of uh, keto sweeteners, syrups in my coffee, um, cakes, cookies, keto products, those type of things. I use them as tools uh, to transition from eating the regular way to eating um, a keto version of that way. So I missed cookies. I ate fat snacks cookies uh, pretty regularly in the beginning. I no longer eat keto cookies. Uh, every now and then during the holidays and stuff, I will partake in that stuff, but I don't, I don't really enjoy them anymore. I tried a fat snacks cookie at Christmas time and it just didn't taste the same. It didn't taste as good. I didn't enjoy it. And so I haven't bought any more. The high key cookies for a while, I ate those and I'll enjoy them. But now when I eat them, they just taste like chemically, they don't taste good to me. And so I don't partake in those anymore either. But that doesn't mean that they didn't play a part in my success because I started out eating them and not eating, you know, Chips Ahoy. And now I don't eat anything like that. So they were useful for me in the beginning to transition from a sugary carb bread based way of eating to where I am now, where I don't even eat almond flour, uh, but on occasion. And those type of things just have worked their way organically out of my daily way of eating. Um, I'm still working on dairy. I have cut down on my dairy a lot. And the reason I did that is because I do have Hashimoto's. And I, honestly, for most people, dairy is an issue and you don't realize it because it is a keto approved food and a carnivore approved food as well because milk and cheese, heavy cream, all that stuff comes from an animal. And so it falls into that category. But once you have really tuned into your body and what it's saying to you, and I say your body, not what your emotions are saying to you because those are two different things and that's a completely different video, but that's important to understand what your body is telling you. And that means what is the feedback you get after you eat something like that? And for me, I get um, more phlegm, I get um, more breakouts, I get back pain, those type of things. And on the whole, it's, it's something that I'm trying to work out of my daily consumption. And I have, for the most part, the only thing I use right now is heavy cream. And for cheese, I have transitioned to goat cheese, which tastes great to me. I love it. And it doesn't seem to have the same negative effects that cow cheese has on me. Also, diet sodas. I used those in the beginning a lot. I mean, I was drinking... I was drinking so much Diet Mountain Dew, and then I went to Diet Dr. Pepper, and I still occasionally have a Diet Dr. Pepper. If we're out somewhere that has a Diet Dr. Pepper on the menu, sometimes I'll get it. Uh, if I'm having a mixed drink, so um, alcohol, I still consume alcohol. I don't drink it in excess. It's more just like a casual cocktail with dinner or if, you know in the summer when we sit by the pool or something like that we don't have a pool but we used to but those type of situations i would do um a diet dr pepper and whiskey or a vodka soda water with lime or um, dry farms wine i really enjoy that and i cut it with sparkling water and that's kind of how i got out of drinking the diet dr pepper is um, I would put half Diet Dr. Pepper and half sparkling water. And that would still give me the essence of Diet Dr. Pepper without consuming as much. And then after a while, I just mainly drink mineral water, sparkling water. We have a soda stream, so I can make my own now, which is really nice. We go through water extremely fast. So the soda stream really helped cut down on like waste. Now I drink mostly water and coffee, uh, the occasional iced tea, but I don't put sweetener in my coffee anymore. I don't put sweetener in my iced tea. I just don't use sweetener like I used to. Supplements, I 
in the beginning I was taking supplements I felt like I needed to because the way diets are portrayed are, are very supplement based. At this point I use very few supplements. I put iodine in my coffee in the morning. I take vitamin D3, um, selenium, but very few supplements as compared to what I was doing in the beginning. I feel great. My labs are great. I don't feel the need to supplement uh, in the way that most diets require you to supplement. I don't take collagen. I don't take biotin. Um, I get my collagen from my meat sources and my hair and nails have never been better. So it's working out for me. <laughs> There are supplements for organ meat. Uh, ancestral supplements is what we use. I don't take them every day and I don't eat organ meat every day. I only take them maybe once or twice a week if I haven't eaten organ meat that week. And I think that that, I think liver and those type of things are super nutritional. However, there are many people not eating organs and not partaking of supplements that are doing fantastic with that way of eating. So I can't say that it's a necessity, but I don't think it hurts. <laughs> and so the moral of the story is I encourage you to start keto in the way that you can and make slow, small changes along the way so that you are able to do this long-term. If you just try to go cold turkey, most people are not gonna stick with this and they're gonna fall off the wagon. I encourage you to count total carbs. If you're wanting to see results in a fast way, cutting carbs down to 20 total grams a day is where you're gonna see the fastest and most benefits for most people. But if you can't do that right away, then starting slowly and decreasing your carbs by half the amount that you're consuming and then going 50 grams of carbs a week or something like that, just as long as you're moving in that general direction, you're gonna see progress for most people. And then depending on your age and your metabolic health and overall health issues, you'll have to clean it up. But that is totally up to you. And you are the only person who can know what affects your individual body, what you need to cut out, can you cut it out, can you sustain this, do you just need to decrease it slowly, those type of things. No one, no one, can tell you that but you because just because you and I both have Hashimoto's doesn't mean that you have to do it the way that I do it or that you should do it the way that I do it but I have seen success I know many other women with Hashimoto's who have seen success and men because men can have Hashimoto's too and they do it the way that I have progressed and seen significant decreases in symptoms their antibodies being lower Keto can fix a lot of things. Ketovore can fix a lot of things. Carnivore can fix a lot of things, but our, our bodies are not immortal. We're not immortal beings and, uh, you know, age and progression throughout life uh, call for changes. Eventually what I do now may not work. I have to make different changes and same goes for most of you. The way that you do it now is probably not going to be the way that you do it 5, 10, 15 years from now. So that's just how I progressed from the original way that I ate to the way that I eat now. That's what worked for me. And I hope that this video was informative and helpful. If it was, make sure you hit that thumb button. Consider subscribing to my channel. Share this video with someone who may need to hear this information. You can share it on Facebook, email, all that good stuff. And subscribe to my channel for more informational videos just like this one. And I'll see you in the next one. Love you, mean it. Bye.